Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. For the third part, the final part, for the lower limb fractures, let's go on. So the topics, acute knee ligaments injury, dislocations of the knee, fracture of the patella and the dislocation of the patella, tibial plateau, tibial spine, then we go to the tibia and fibula, going to the foot, which is the talus, then the calcaneum, mid-tarsal injury, and we will finish with march or stress fractures. So for the acute ligaments of the knee, as you all know, the ligaments of the knee, because it's bone with bone, okay, it's a joint that's having the femur and the tibia with the patella. So it's working as flexion extension only. So whenever you have an injury or a stress, either valgus or varus, which is valgus lateral, varus medial, this stress, if it's strong, it's going to give you injuries, either fractures or ligaments injury. And if it's very severe, it's going to affect the neurovascular. So if you have valgus stress, so you are pushing the distal, the distal part, which is the leg valgus. So you are pushing it to the lateral, outer side. So the things that's going to be affected, you might get an MCL, which is the medial collateral ligament injury. You might get semitendinosus uh, tendon uh, problems. Posterior medial part of the capsule, the cruciate ligament, which is very important, which is the ACL and the PCL. And we will have a special lecture talking about the ACL and the PCL. And depending on the position of the knee for sure, because if you have a, a knee which is fully extended straight, there will be bony part that is, makes it hard to bend. If it's a bit flexed, there will be MCL only working. So it's easier to get MCL injury when you have flexion at knee at 30 degrees. That's why when you do knee examination, we do flexion at 30 degrees and we test and we do on full extension. So we do it on both ways. And we will talk about knee, knee examination on a separate video. The other way around, if you have a varus stress, which is internally pushing the distal part, the leg, you might get LCL injury, lateral collateral ligament, iliotibial band problem, posterior lateral corner. Posterior lateral corner is very important. We have to keep it in mind, which is the popliteus tendon, the capsule, the arcuate ligament, and the ALL anterior lateral ligament. So these ligaments, they prevent the varus stress for the knee. Um, it's very important to know the stabilizers of the knee that it's bony and we have ligaments and muscles, which is static and dynamic. Static, they are not moving, mostly ligaments. Dynamic, they are muscles. So the static, they are the medial collateral ligament, the lateral collateral ligament, the ALL, the posterior lateral corner, the meniscus, the anterior posterior cruciate ligaments. A lot of ligaments around the knee. And we have the muscles, we have the quadriceps, uh, we have the anterior compartment, okay, which is the quadriceps, we have the posterior, which is the hamstring. So a lot of stabilizing for the knee. Uh, this is for the posterior lateral corner. You can see the popliteal fibular ligament, you can see the popliteus tendon, okay, very important to keep in mind. So the mechanism of injury usually it's bending of the knee. It's very common that patients come into the emergency room and they are complaining that, oh, we had a bent of the knee and it's swollen and it's painful. So how can you approach this patient? History, physical examination and investigations. Usually, as you know, dashboard injuries, football, soccer players, sometimes you have rotation with bending. It will cause you more ligament injury, ACL, medial, lateral, collateral ligament, and so whatever. So it's very common. The knee injury is very common, and every one of you, for sure, you have heard that someone has got ACL injury. For example, a lot of uh, players, Ronaldo, the Brazilian player, had ACL three times, for example. So you might get fracture or dislocation, or you might get only ligamentous injury. Um, this is an MRI, and you can see that this black thing is the anterior cruciate ligament. It has some disruption in here, so it's completely ruptured. We will talk about it in a separate lecture, the ACL. This is MRI showing here the MCL, the medial collateral ligament is cut. So clinical features, usually twisting injury, okay? It will give you painful, swollen knee, the patient cannot walk sometimes because of the pain, sometimes it's gonna give you locking, giving way, which is unstable knee. So this is all indications that you should ask about in the history that it will give you, ah, because it's locking, it might be a mechanism of injury. It could be meniscal injury. If it's giving way, so it's mostly ligamentous injury, it could be MCL, LCL, ACL, PCL. So it's ligamentous most. So it's important to keep in mind the mechanism of injury and the history. Usually, usually, 
in the meniscal injury, the swelling uh, appears immediately. If you have a ligamentous injury, it's going to be pain, then some time, then swelling. So this is comparison. There will be for sure pain, bruising, okay? And sometimes it could be vascular damage. So keep in mind this. So for the stability, Barras or Vargas uh, sideway examination, uh, first for the knee at 30 degrees, for sure, as we all know, and straight. You have to do both of them. If the knee angulates only in slight flexion, there is probably isolated tear in the collateral ligaments, as I just told you. So if it's on 30 degree, no bone instability. If it's full extension, there is bone helping the MCL or the LCL. Um, partial tears uh, permit no abnormal movement. So if you are examining your patient, you will see a stable knee. Might be bruising, swelling, pain, tenderness, but the knee is stable. If it's complete, sometimes it will be unstable and your patient might not complain from pain. So that's why it's very important to know it's partial or complete. Usually, usually you have to get x-ray. Okay, it's ligamentous. Why to get x-ray? Because you can have fractures with ligamentous injury. So for example, in the lateral part, you can have fibular fracture. In the medial part, you can have medial edge of the femur fracture. Tibial spine, if it's anterior cruciate ligament avulsion. From the back, it could be posterior cruciate ligament avulsion. So very important to keep in mind. MRI, MRI, MRI for ligaments, don't forget. Um, if intact fiber, if intact fibers splint the torn ones and they will spontaneously heal. So if it's partial of, or a strain, conservative management. Sometimes if, it's, if you're having heme arthrosis, a lot of blood inside, you can aspirate to decrease the pain and the tamponade effect inside the joint. Um, weight bearing for sure is you have to weight bear your patient, okay? We use the monomic price, price, P-R-I-C-E, which is protect, bandage, brace, so whatever, R, rest, ice, compression elevation so this is the price six to eight weeks everything is going to be fine hopefully then you return to physiotherapy and strengthening of the muscles and your patient is going to be okay if it's complete tear if it's only isolated mcl usually usually it's going to heal alone so conservative management for six weeks isolated lcl is a bit more rare than mcl mcl is commoner conservatively if it's pcl isolated conservatively most of the patient will end up with little or no loss of function. So usually they're gonna be fine unless they are sport, active, high demand patients. It's another story. Okay, isolated ACL should be treated early operative reconstruction. So ACL, so what's ACL and PCL? Let's talk about them a little bit. So basically ACL and PCL, they are anterior cruciate ligament, posterior cruciate ligament. They are crossing each other like this. That's why the name of them is uh, anterior and posterior crochet ligament. In Arabic, it's called ribat salibi because it's crossing. So these two ligaments, the anterior crochet ligament, it, its function is to maintain the tibia against anterior translation on the femur and the PCL the other way around. And they have with the internal and external rotation a role. If you have an injured ACL or PCL, usually if it's complete cut, you will have positive examination, which is anterior drawer, posterior drawer, and Lachman test. So uh, it's very important to know the, how to examine a patient with a knee injury that we will talk about it later. So every operative scope, usually reconstruction of the ACL, then you put in a brace and follow up with the patient. This is like very fast about the ACL and PCL, but we will talk about them in details later on. This location of the knee. This location is very important because we have major things that could be affected. So when does um, uh, dislocations happen? You have high energy trauma, usually RTAs. You have bruising, swelling, deformity. You have to check for the circulation because injury of the popliteal artery is very common to be torn or obstruction. So that's why distal neurovascular examination is mandatory. X-ray, you can see dislocated um, knee, either posterior lateral, anteriorly. 
uh, you can check for fractures on the x-ray with the dislocation and you can see avulsion fractures in the lateral tibial condyle which is called second fractures and if you have second fracture this is pathognomic for acl injury so if you have acl injury mostly you will see second second fracture okay you can check ankle brachial index and x-ray showing the posterior lateral dislocation x-ray showing posterior lateral dislocation anterior medial dislocation another time Whenever you have a dislocated joint, what to do? Reduce, yes. So always you have to reduce the joint, usually under GA. What are the complications? Early, arterial injury, popliteal artery. Be careful of the popliteal artery because if you delay, you will end up by amputation. Nerves injury, yes, the lateral popliteal nerve may be injured. That's why it's important to do reduction as soon as possible. Late, joint stiffness and joint instability. This is very fast, like just tips for the commonest injuries let's talk about the patella the patella is the biggest sesamoid bone in the body it's very important it has the thick the thickest articular cartilage about seven millimeters so the function of the patella is to transmit the quadriceps traction into the leg so it eases the extension of the knee Without the patella, they've seen that you need much more force, like seven folds, just to do the same extension. That's why patella is very mandatory in the extension mechanism of the knee. The patella, for sure, it's a bone. It has an articular surface. It has the facets that's articulating with the condyles of the femur. And if you look at the condyles of the femur in here, you can see that there is a depression. This depression, the intercondylar notch, this is a place where the patella is sitting. With the facets that's why it's a joint it's called the patello femoral joint the patello femoral joint you can fracture the patella either by direct injury or indirect direct it's a direct trauma on it you fall down on the knee immediately you can get transverse fracture you can get a crack you can get comminution or it's indirect which is the force of the quadriceps muscle is pulling so it might cause you a avulsion fracture uh, swelling, pain, and loss of extension. So extension mechanism must or might be uh, not intact. So x-ray, you will see the fracture line, you will see the displacement, you can see the gap, you can, you should look for other injuries in the knee and the distal femur or in the upper tibia and fibula. It's very important. Roll of two AP and lateral. And we have specific view, it's called skyline. So we take an X-ray from the upper part with the knee flexed uh, in 30, oh, sorry, 40 degrees. It's like this. So you look at the X-ray, you can see the groove, this groove, and you can see the patella over it. So it's important to assess for the patellar articular surface. This is a lateral X-ray. You can see here the transverse fracture in the patella. Intraarticular. Don't forget that this fracture is for the patella, the transverse in the facet, it's intraarticular because the patella femoral joint is a joint. So what principles we have to do? Anatomical reduction and rigid fixation. Yes, this is a fracture you can see here, the fracture line, okay, for the lateral pole. Treatment, if it is not displaced, you can put the patient in a plaster cylinder, which is a long POP, it's a cylinder, it gives you the ability for your patient to walk Okay, and the patella is healing, but he cannot bend because if he bend and the quadriceps will function, it will pull the muscle, the fragment, the proximal pole of the patella, and it will be distracted. That's why you have to put it in full extension. You put the cylinder and the patient can for walk four to six weeks and everything is going to be fine. If it's comminuted severely, you are trying to get the best anatomical reduction but if it's severely comminuted we are sorry we have to do patellectomy which will cause more force for the quadriceps to function normally operation if it's transverse we have a very nice maneuver which is called tension band principle so what's what's the tension band it's two k wires and we put something called a circlage circlage so what does this do it's very nice biomechanically so the quadriceps is gonna pull Okay, so let's get back. I, I like the drawing thing. Okay, so the thing is that the force is pulling. So the force is pulling. This is the quadriceps, and the patellar tendon is pulling this way. So you see, it's distraction. 
So what's the tension band doing? When distraction is happening, it changes this force from distraction to compression. And we love in orthopedics compression because compression means bone healing, bone healing. So it changes the distraction or traction into compression on the fracture side. So this fracture side will have more compression. It will promote healing. That's why we put tension band. We fix for two weeks, like we put a back slap or POP just to protect the wound. Then we start the patient to move because when he's moving, the tension band is gonna compress. The more he's doing tension, the more compression is gonna happen. Very nice principle. What about the dislocation? So I told you there is the patellar groove or the intercondylar notch, okay? You can see here this patella is dislocated laterally, laterally, which is very common. And we have very, 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 or a lot of causes that might give you a dislocation in the patella, which is the genovalgum, which is geno, which means knee. Valgum is going outside. So the human being is like this. It's called genovalgum. The more genovalgum, the more dislocation of the patella. Tibial torsion, if it's internal or external tibial torsion, that's going to give you a problem with the um, uh, patella. High or low riding patella, it's either patella alta or patella baja. Patella alta is higher in position, patella baja is lower. Shallow intercondylar groove, which is this groove I told you about. This is intercondylar, if it's shallow. Okay, there is no angle between two, these two condyles. Patellar hypermobility or ligamentous laxity. As you can see in this X-ray, you can see that there is a patellar dislocation, which is in the lateral, fibula lateral. So this is lateral dislocation. So in most cases, you can push back the patella, it's gonna be back to normal. Uh, the problem is that you have complication that it might have recurrent dislocation, 15%, 15 to 20% of these patients. Okay. Tibial plateau fractures. So what's tibial plateau? It's the upper part of the tibia. Usually it is intra-articular fractures. And again, anatomical reduction and rigid fixation. Bravo. So uh, there is a classification. It's called Schatzker classification. It's classifying the intra-articular fracture. Type 1 is only lateral split. Type 2, it is split with depression. Type 3 is pure depression. Type 4, it's medial condyle. Type 5, bicondylar, and type 6, it's extending to the metathesis. The more you go with the classification up, the more worse it is, okay? So this is the classification I told you about. Now knee, it's swollen, it's deformed, bruising. Be careful. This is a high energy trauma. The soft tissue is important to keep in mind, compartment syndrome. Be careful of compartment syndrome. So neurovascular is very important to assess. So you have to get x-rays and CT scan. Why CT scan? Because it's an intra-articular fracture. You want to see how many fractures. It is only depression, is there is split. You want to plan your surgery. What tools should I use? Plates, screws, so whatever. So it's very important to get a CT scan. This is one type of the fracture. You can see here the split, okay? With depression, so it's very important to do CT scan for these patients. If it's undisplaced, after CT, you can conceive, you can conceive, you can do conservative management. But usually because it's intra-articular, it's better to go for fixation because the patient, if you want to treat him with uh, con uh, conservative, you have to let him not to be with not less than six to eight weeks, no touching on the floor, because if he touches the floor and he has weight, it's gonna be displaced. That's why it's better to fix and permit early range of motion. As you can see here, this is a screw cannulated screw, this is a plate. And what this plate is doing, it's buttressing this wall, okay? So that's why it is called buttress plate because it's holding this fragment to the articular surface. You can allow early range of motion. The patient can start moving the knee joint earlier so there is no joint stiffness, which is one of the worst complication you might get. Um, as you can see, for example, in type three, which is pure depression, you have to go inside and put back the articular surface because it's depressed. You have to return anatomical reduction, then rigid fixation with screws. So it's very important. Complications, compartment, early and late, joint stiffness, joint stiffness, joint stiffness, joint stiffness, deformity and osteoarthritis. What about the tibia and the fibula, which is the both bone? The tibia, it's more common 
fractured and it's very subcutaneous because it's skin, fascia, bone. Okay, it's immediately under. So it's very, easy, it's very easy to get an open fracture in the tibia because it's very superficial. So usually it's either twisting, it, it will give you spiral fracture or direct trauma, it will give you transverse or bending, it might give you uh, oblique. So it's direct and indirect trauma. Be careful of soft tissue damage, be careful of compartment syndrome. The most common place that you might get compartment syndrome is the leg true. So leg is important to keep in mind that you might get compartment syndrome. X-ray for sure, and don't forget the role of two. Two joints, two limbs, two occasions, and two opinions. Very important to keep in mind to role of two. It's very important too, if it's an open fracture, you have to know which type it is, which type it is. It's Gastillo type what? So Gastillo, it's a classification, gives you it's type one, two, or three, three A, B, C. So you can prepare or uh, plan your management for this patient. Type one, it's a low energy, the one size is less than one centimeter, loss of tissue injury, no contamination, no periosteal slipping, no vascular injury. It's good, it's the best one in the open fractures. Open fractures are bad, but this is the best one. Type two, more than one centimeters up to 10, moderate the mechanism, moderate soft tissue injury, low contamination. Three, it's high energy trauma, more than 10 centimeters, extensive soft tissue injury, severe. If you go to B, now, this is severe complex fracture pattern, might be contaminated, extensive soft tissue. Type C means you have vascular injury. So if you get vascular injury, this is immediately Gastello type three. So keep in mind, this is Gastello or Tishrin classification, okay? And if it's open fracture, antibiotics, you can put external fixator, debridement, anti-tetanus, and observe the patient until the soft tissue gets better so you can go and fix your fracture. Don't fix an open fracture which is dirty until it's clean. Okay, um, the main objectives, as I told you before, soft tissue injury, be careful, prevent compartment syndrome, hold the fracture, early weight bearing, early mobilization for the patient and start to move as soon as possible. Good, I love, I love this word, which is fracture personality. So what's fracture personality? That you have to study your fracture before you go into the surgery, before you rush into the patient, think about the fracture. What's the personality of my fracture? Is it open or closed? Is it high energy or low energy? What about the soft tissue around? Is it allowing me to go in? How should I hold this fracture, conservative or surgical? What's the morphology of the fracture? Is it transverse, oblique? Is it spiral? Is it comminuted? Is it wedged? Is it butterfly? A nail or screw? A plate maybe? So personality of the fracture, you have to know what are you dealing with? Is it intra or extra articular? These questions are very important. Is my patient old or young? Is he high demanding? Is he active? Is he a worker? Or he's just in the bed? Is he having money CVAs and he's not weight bearing? Should I fix the fracture or not? So you have to fix about the personality of the fracture and to think about your patient. Um, you can, for sure, conservative. Okay, if you have multi-injured patient, ATLS protocol, if your patient, multi-injured patient, you put him on traction, you put skeletal, um, traction or you put external fixator and you wait until the patient allows you to go to go in another time don't go into surgery if the patient is in bad shape because you will enhance a um, SARS which is systemic inflammatory response syndrome SARS sorry corona time now viruses are everywhere so SARS systemic inflammatory response syndrome if you treat conservatively you can make your patient walk then you put functional brace. External fixator is possible for open fractures. Intramedullary nail is very nice in the tibia. This is called expert nail. You go from entry point and you put intramedullary canal and it heals very well because it re it's, re it's returning to you length, alignment, and rotation. Extra articular fracture for the tibia and fibula. Wow, you fix the tibia. Shouldn't you fix the fibula? No, if you fix the tibia, the fibula will heal anyway. Plate is very good option sometimes. External fixator. Okay, too much talking on the TPL fractures. Please be careful of compartment syndrome, the most important. Let's go to the foot. Before going to the foot, I'm going to tell you a bit for the ankle. The ankle, you know, distally, the distal tibia and fibula is articulating with the 
tell us, okay? So we have the medial and lateral malleolus. So medial malleolus, lateral malleolus, both of them, or posteriorly the tibia, posterior malleolus. These fractures are considered intraarticular fractures. So you have to get anatomical reduction, rigid fixation. So if a patient had the ankle sprain, he might have an only sprain, and it has grades. One, two, three, four depends on the injury for the ligaments, but sometimes the bone might fail. And if the bone fails, you can have medial malleolus fracture, which is from the tibia, or you can have lateral malleolus fracture, which is from the fibula. And you have to know the classification for sure. So we have very nice classifications for ankle fractures. You have to keep them in mind. But, but lateral fibular fracture, you have to know where is the fracture? Is it below the syndesmosis, at the level of the syndesmosis, or, or above the syndesmosis? What, are, what is the syndesmosis? Syndesmosis is tissues, fibrous tissues, is holding the tibia and the fibula together it's in the distal part. So if it's below, it's called Weber type A. On the level of the syndesmosis, Weber type B, or above Weber type C. And you have to know the personality of the fracture. Should you put plate? Should you put tension band? medial, lateral, or posterior uh, malleolus. So ankle fractures is very common. Ankle fractures are very, very, very common. So you have to keep them in mind before going to the calcaneus. Okay, now for the calcaneus, calcaneus usually happening from falling from a height, like axial load. When you have calcaneus fracture, please think about the ankle the tibia, the knee, the femur, the pelvis, the spine, the cervical spine, wow, really? Yes, because usually when they fall down, they have axial load. So this load might go to the whole body. Keep it in mind. Whenever you have calcaneal fracture, look for another fractures in the lower limbs. For sure, we have angles. We have to calculate on the lateral X-ray. We have polar angle and cassane. The polar angle should be from 20 to 40, and the cassane should be from 20, 120 to 145. Um, very important to keep this in mind. You might treat them conservatively, or you go for surgery, because calcaneus having an articulation, as you can see here, calcaneus with the telus. So it's very important that you keep in mind that it might be intraarticular fracture which needs um, fixation. CT scan is mandatory for sure. CT scan is important to assess intraarticular fractures. If it's undisplaced, conservative, displaced, you have to do reduction and put screws in. Complications, uh, broadening of the heel, telecalcania and stiffness of the osteoarthritis if it's intraarticular for sure. Tell us. As you can see, the talus is articulating with the tibia fibula, with the talus, with the calcaneus, with the navicular, and these bones, with the tarsal bones. That's why it's most of it, it's articular surface. Articular surface means that there is not much blood supply going in, so the risk of avascular necrosis is high, like the femoral head, like the talus, like the scaphoid, like the carpal bones. Keep them in mind. These areas are bad for AVN. And the talus is really like a huge weight bearing site for the foot. So it's very important to keep in mind for avascular necrosis. Tinting is dangerous because open fracture is not an open. You can see tinting through the skin, like the clavicle. Can you remember? So yeah, be careful of that. You have to get x-rays and you have to get CT scan. This is an undisplaced fracture, for example. Be careful of AVN treatment. Reduction, reduction, reduction is not needed until it's displaced, unless it's displaced. So this is a talus anatomy. Look how many articular surfaces it has. It's articulating with the tibia from the upper side, which is the talar doom. From the lower side, it's articulating with the calcaneus. From the anterior side, with the navicular. A lot of articular surfaces, a lot of uh, sulcus places, arteries are going in, sul sul sulcus tersi, or sulcus teri. A lot, a lot of places. So it's complex anatomy. You don't have to know every single detail, but you have to keep in mind that it's like in particular, you have to reduce the anatomy. It's weight bearing because if you kept it like this, with each step, your patient is going to have pain. For the metatarsal injuries, like, like the navicular cuneiform or the cuboid bone, you might have fractures, as you can see in this row. You might have injuries, dislocations, fractures. Um, your patient is going to present with pain or foot in the pain, swelling. And you could have dislocations, okay, which is acute 
clubfoot. And we will talk about clubfoot in the pediatric sessions. Be careful of compartment syndrome. Be careful of compartment syndrome. You can see here dislocation of the talonavicular joint. Talus navicular dislocation of the talonavicular joint. Ligamentous strain, it's possible. The state fracture, manipulation, and conservative management cost six to eight weeks. Tarsal metatarsal injuries to end with either sprain, twisting, dislocation. You can see here dislocation of the TMT joint with the tarsal metatarsal joint. Be careful of less frank injury, which is the ligament between the first and second ray. Okay, it's called less frank injury. It's common, you have to reduce and not to miss. Uh, metatarsal fractures. You can remember metacarpal fractures like long bones. Yes, if it's like this transverse fracture, this is direct trauma, high energy trauma, be careful of compartment. If it's not displaced, you can splint. If it's displaced, you can reduce. Stress injury or march fractures, it's for the arm. Because of repetitive stress, repetitive stress is usually on the second metatarsal, as you can see here, signs of bone healing, sclerosis, like it was there a fracture. There is no true line of fracture, but there is fracture healing. So this is called stress or march fracture. This is the most common injuries for the lower limb. I did not cover everything for sure, but these are the most common, most important. Please be careful for, for ankle fractures, proximal tibia, knee dislocation, and tarsal uh, bones. These are the commonest to have examination on. Please focus on the examination in neurovascular, the arteries, the ankle brachial index, and the nerves the sensory and the motor. The sensory is very important. We ask a lot about them in the OSCEs. I think this is the last slide. Hope you had fun in the lower limbs. See you in the next lecture.